Hello everyone, welcome into today's word from the Lord. I am really excited as always to bring this message to you today. This is actually going to be one of those messages that I've never done on this ministry channel before. I've never even talked about in this ministry at all before in terms of an in-depth teaching. So I'm really excited because I know that it's going to be something that's very meaty for you. So I encourage you to, if you haven't already, grab a pen and paper or whatever you have to take notes because this is going to be something that you're going to want to reference back to. You're going to want to write down the scriptures that I share with you. You're going to want to write down the points that I share with you because it's going to help many of you with where God is wanting to take you next and where you are right now. I can say that by the Spirit of God because I know that there are many of you who when I'm praying for you and my prayer time when I go before the Lord, whether that's at night or in the morning, the Lord puts things on my heart to pray for you all concerning just things that are heavy on your heart, desires that are in your heart, things that you bring to Him. I am partnering my faith with yours. I'm going before the Lord in my prayer time to lift up your heart desires before him, really. And I believe that it's, it's a result of that. And even on these messages, when I pray for you all in the beginning and the end of these messages, you all come into agreement with me that God uses that, right? He's in the midst of us. When two or more are gathered in his name, then he is in the midst. And he uses that, our faith, to bring about the things that we're believing in him for, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I'm really excited to share with you all the message of the Lord today. I believe it's going to help many of you. And what's funny is that I thought it was going to be, I was writing the notes for it because I was going before the Lord and I was going to actually share something else different with you all today. But then I started to write out the notes for what the Lord actually wanted to share with you today. And I thought it was going to be something short. I thought it was going to be something very quick. And I'm going to make this as impactful, but also not as exhaustive um, as it could be. But I want to make sure that you're grasping what it is the Lord is trying to convey to you. Um, with being as detailed as possible, because I know that if you really grasp this, if you really grasp what I'm going to be sharing with you today, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. It'll change your level. You'll see things differently. You'll see the world differently and how you interact with it as a kingdom ambassador. You'll see yourself differently. You'll see the kingdom of God differently. It will just be different for you because it was that way for me. And it was that way, and it is that way for many others who are in the body of Christ who have grasped this. So I'm going to pray really quick, and then I'm going to get into the word of the Lord for you today. Lord, we all gather together before you. We humble ourselves at your feet. I ask that you bring your spirit, Lord, into the atmosphere. Let your oil flow today, Lord, into the environment of where your children are at, and wherever they are, wherever they at, are at right now, where you have sent them to listen to this word from you today. I ask that you send your spirit into their atmosphere now. Open their hearts and minds so that they're able to receive the word of the Lord today. Pour out your spirit of revelation, Lord. Begin to open them up so that they can understand and perceive what it is that you were telling them today. So not only do they understand it and perceive it, not only does it penetrate their heart and mind, but they're able to take it and run with it. That they're able to allow it to produce good fruit, Lord God. And that it extends far beyond just them, but into everything attached to them. And those those who are attached to them. I lower myself so that you can be lifted up in me. I ask that you will speak what thus saith the Lord throughout my mouth and let not the opinions of Shannon go forth, Lord. I ask that you speak to your children as they are here and they are listening and they are believing in you to guide them, Lord God, to be a lamp unto their feet. We thank you for being with us here right now. We thank you for your word, which never returns back to you void. And I thank you for all that will come as a result of releasing this word into the atmosphere, into their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I'm really excited to share this with you because I know that, I know I keep saying that, and I keep saying that because it's true. It absolutely is true. You know, I was, um, I think it was my husband that I was telling a few days ago how if the Lord puts a word in my spirit, it is literally something that it's like an urgency. There's an urgency that I feel when it comes to wanting to release it to you. And I almost feel as if it's a time limit on it too. As if I don't, if I don't release it in a certain time period that it won't be as 
not that it won't be as effective because the spirit of God is always moving upon his word, right? Especially when it's an anointed vessel of God. But what I'm saying is there may be somebody who needed that word. And I know many of you who are here today, you need what it is that I'm going to be sharing with you. But then there was a time window to release it that I moved outside of. That has um, consequences. That affects things within the realm of the spirit. I have to learn, and this is very important for many of you who are watching too, I have to learn to stay within the timing of God. It's very important for those of you who want to be in alignment with God to learn how to stay within the timing of God. So crucial. That's a whole other message. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're listening because I believe there's something in it for you. So today we're going to be talking about calling in your harvest. And I'm, I was going to say I'm really excited to share that. I'm really happy to dive into this. And it's actually, I have, I have a ton of notes here. I'm going to try to get through them all. I have a ton of scriptures here. I'm going to try to get through them all. But if you stick with me, you will reap if you faint not, quite literally. And so I'm going to call in your harvest. I'm going to be telling you how to do this. Um, but I also have a ton of scripture that I want to go with you through. Because you need to understand what the word of God says about seed time and harvest time. And this is a message that I have not yet to do on this ministry channel before. I've talked about it briefly. I've talked about it in other messages. I have a kingdom economy playlist. I talked about it a lot there, but I don't have one message that is specifically teaching on that subject alone. And so here it is today. So I have a few points here. The first thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to calling in your harvest, because I believe there is one for many of you that are watching this right now, a good harvest from the kingdom of God. The first thing is to know that there is no harvest without seed sown. The reason why this is very important to know, and you could write this down, is because there are many people, there are even many ministers, there are just many people, and, and it could be out of ignorance, it could be just out of not really going deep in the word of God, who will say, your harvest is coming, your harvest is coming, there's harvest time, there's harvest time. But what they're not actually sharing is that there cannot be a harvest, a good harvest, coming without seed sown and so that's just that's just the principle of god that's just the word of god i'm going to take you to scripture but there needs to be seed sown i'm going to talk about the different kinds of seed that you could sow when it comes to the kingdom of god and it's also very important that we're being intentional about sowing more seeds in the kingdom than we are into the world than we are into the kingdom of darkness because there are many of us within the body of christ who has made Jesus our Lord and our Savior, but yet we sow more seeds into this world. We're more invested into what's going on in this world, meaning we sow our time, we sow our, our energy, our attention, our money into the things of this world, and even some of us into the kingdom of darkness, than we do into the kingdom of God. And that's got to change. I'm going to say, by the Spirit of God, if you continue to listen to this message and you dig in deep with us, and you make it to the end, I'm going to pray over you, that's going to change. That's going to change. You're going to begin to sow more seeds into God's kingdom, which means you're going to be a kingdom by the end of the year. You're going to help expand God's kingdom. And then as a result of that, you're going to change. Your life is going to change. And not just financially, I'm talking about across the board. That's just how it works when you learn this. So I'm going to read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 through 11. I'm going to be reading this from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition. It tells us, In God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. Thus you will be enriched in all things and in every way, so that you can be generous. And your generosity, as it is administered by us, will bring forth thanksgiving to God. This scripture is so crucial. It's so important that we really grasp what it's saying here. What, what Paul is saying here is that, God will increase your seed for sowing and give seed to the sower. He does it so that you're able to be generous. He does it so that you're able to give more to his kingdom, more to people, so that you're able to be more of a giver. 
but you have to already be a sower. You have to already have the heart of a giver. And we're going to talk more about that before he will give you seed. And so he gives seed to sow so that you can be generous to others. He will multiply your resources so that you can be generous to others, not so that you can hoard it. Not so that you can keep it all to yourself. Not so that you can boast that you've done it all in your own might or power. No, that brings into Deuteronomy 8.18, where the word of the Lord says, Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to create wealth. It's God and God alone. And he does it so that you may be generous to other people. And I want you to know that there's a difference between strategically giving by faith and scattering. That's very important because... It's also a matter, and I talk about this all the time, how it's a matter of the heart. How if you have the proper heart posture, then you're automatically going to be strategically giving by faith because your heart is in the right place. And Paul talks about this as well. As well. We're going to get there. But someone who does not have the proper heart posture, they're going to fall into scattering, meaning they're just scattering things because for multiple reasons, uh, they're trying to provoke God to bless them by buying a blessing. It doesn't work like that. Or it's just out of not being a good steward. And so there's a difference. There's a difference between strategically giving by faith and scattering. To strategically give by faith, it means that you have found a field with good soil, and we're gonna talk more about that too, and you have seen good fruit being produced there, and you yourself decide by faith that you're going to plant seeds there so that you also may produce a good fruit. Good fruit. That is the difference. You don't just scatter. And so there are three different types of seeds. And this is where you can start taking notes for those of you who are taking notes. I'm going to actually get some water first. Okay. There are three different types of seeds. There, well, the first type is words or thoughts. And I'm going to actually read to you Mark chapter 4. I'm going to take you to scripture and prove it to you because there are some of you who may say, that's not true. Words are not seeds. It's very true. It's actually very biblical and, and scriptural. I'm going to take you to Mark chapter 4. And I'm going to read from my ESV because I don't have it written down here because it's um, a lot verse 13 through 15. Mark chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Okay. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? This is Jesus speaking. I want to set up the story or I want to set up what's going on before I continue reading. What's happening here is the disciples that came to him and they said pretty much, you know, why do you say, Jesus, why are you speaking in parables? You know, why do you say everything in parables? And I'm going to actually skip up to verse 10, where, he's, where it's actually showing us that the disciples asked him this. They said, and when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables. So what he's saying is to his children, to his disciples, to those who follow Jesus, because it has to be a posture of the heart, then you'll understand what he's saying. You'll understand the parables. It's, it's really not a parable because you understand it clearly and how it relates to your life and what Jesus is saying to you. But for those who are outside, as Jesus said, in other words, for those who do not follow him, it, meaning they may be proclaiming Christians, they may be saying they believe in Jesus, but even Satan, even the demons believe in Jesus. But those who don't follow him, these are parables in the sense that they don't understand. And so Jesus said to you, it has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables so that they may indeed see, but not per perceive and may indeed hear, but not understand lest they should turn and be forgiven. And so that's not you though. That's not you because you're here. You're taking in what's being taught. You're listening to the word of the Lord and you're actually receiving it. It's falling on good ground. And so because it falls on good ground, the word of the Lord says that some will produce some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's going to be the case for you. Jesus said to those that are on the outside, they're not disciples of Jesus. They don't follow Jesus. 
it really they really don't understand they'll hear it but not actually understand it they'll see it but not perceive what it is that they're seeing and he says unless they should turn and be forgiven this is why repentance is important so starting from verse 13 that's where i was initially going to start because we're talking about how words are seeds words and thoughts jesus said and it says he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all the parables? So he's saying the parable that's about to follow, if you don't understand this, how are you going to stand all the other parables I talked about? And then verse 14, he says, the sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. Words are seeds that you sow. Words and thoughts. Because when you think, you're thinking in words. It's, it's an image that comes across your mind. It's translated into a word that then leaves your lips. And then I'm going to go, I'm actually going to, you know what? I'm going to read verse 15 through 20 because it's, it's very powerful. I can't not read this. And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. And so these are people who hear the word. It's sown into them. You know, think about people who you spend all day pouring wisdom into, who you're praying for. The word is sown. And he, sa he says, these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. So they have faith for a little while, right? They're standing for a little while. But he says, then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. What causes persecution and tribulation to come? Jesus tells us. He says the word does. The word does. So here's what happens. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal to you a plan of the enemy or an attack of the enemy, how it really happens. So you, and it could be for you, it could be for someone else. So it could be if you're pouring into someone else words of wisdom, you're praying for that person, or someone's doing that for you, right? What's going to happen is tribulation is going to come and persecution is going to come. Jesus said they hated him, so they're going to hate you. That's going to come. And he says, because of the word. He says, when it arises on the account of the word, immediately they fall away. So what's going to happen is, well, this is what I'll, I'll rephrase it and say this. What will happen as a result of you listening to this, and I'm glad that you're here, is you're going to stand. You're going to stand when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the, wor the word. And because of that, you'll reap if you faint not. I'm going to continue reading. But what I want you to know is, is that tribulation and persecution will come because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. You're not like people in the world. So I'm going to continue reading. Verse 18. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke out the word and it proves unfruitful. And so he's talking about a group of people who hears the word. They hear the good news. They hear the message of the kingdom. But then what's also in their heart are cares of this world, covetedness. They're, they care too much for the things of this world. Essentially, it's idolatry. And because of that, it chokes out the word. And so you need more word in you than you have world. <laughs> you need more word of God. You need more Jesus than you have the things of this world. And as a result of that, you will prevail. As a result of that, the word won't be choked out. You will overcome. You will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so verse 20, and then you will be fruitful too, of course, it says, but those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word. Listen to this. And this is you who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30 fold and 60 fold and 100 fold. What's so interesting about this verse 20 is that there are many times where the word of the Lord is taught. And I'm talking about reading it verbatim, word from word from scripture. And there are many people who go up against it. They say that's the Old Testament. We're not we're not back there anymore. Or they say we're not supposed to tithe anymore. Or they, whatever it is, they, they literally just pick what they want out of the word of God and they stand on that and they just throw away the rest of it. That's not accepting the word. And they wonder why everything is not aligning with the promises of God in their life. 
with the blessings that the word of the Lord says should be for them. And then it turns into being mad at God. It's not God. It's, it's, it's disobedience. It's rebellion, which is that's the sin of witchcraft. But verse 20 says, those that are sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word. And they don't just hear it, but you accept it. You accept it into your heart, into your spirit. And then you bear good fruit. And what will happen is it will come forth 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold. And I'll talk about that more towards the end of this message, what that actually means. But words are seeds. And, I, you know, again, if that's the same thing, if you're praying for brother and sister in Christ, you're speaking, pouring words of wisdom, knowledge into them. That is you sowing seeds. And so it just happens that way. It will come back that way. Not only will, when I mean it, it'll come back that way is you will receive a harvest, but then they will also bear fruit. And I'll, I'll talk more about that, but I'm going to go on to the second type of seed. And that is good deeds. I want to take you to Proverbs three, verse 30 through 31. I'm going to be reading from the NLT, the new living translation. It tells us the seeds of good deeds become a tree of life. A wise person wins friends. If the righteous are rewarded here on earth, what will happen to wicked sinners? And so essentially what's happening here is it's telling us that you will reap what you will sow. Whether it's good or bad, you're going to reap what you will sow, but it will be here on earth. It'll be here on earth. And people think that they could do whatever, they could sin, and they're only going to be re rewarded for their bad deeds, really reaping their bad deeds after they pass away. That's not true. Yes, there will be a judgment day. Absolutely. But Galatians 6 tells us God will not be mocked. Every man will reap what he sows and it will happen here on earth. Absolutely. And we could see it happening now. if We just kind of look across the lives of those who are not walking uprightly according to God's standard of righteousness and holiness. They are clearly reaping what, what they have sown. And so Proverbs 3, verse 30 through 31, it actually tells us that. It says, if the righteous are rewarded here on earth, that's you. You will be rewarded here on earth, and God rewards those who diligently seek him. What will happen to the wicked sinners? They too will be rewarded here on earth. They will reap what they have sown, and it will happen while they're living. And so Galatians and same thing for you. It'll happen while you're living. You'll reap what you've sown. If you're sowing seeds in the kingdom of God, you're going to reap a harvest for that here on earth. So Galatians 6 also talks about a sowing of good and bad deeds. I just mentioned that. I'm going to actually take you there, though. Give me a moment. Okay, so that is Galatians 6, verse 6 through 7. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever one sows, that will he also reap. And there it is. Absolutely. It's talking about, yes, deeds those who sow good deeds and bad deeds, but you can apply this to sowing across the board. Absolutely. So I'm going to take you also to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. And, and this brings us into the third type of seed. So there are three types of seeds. It's words and thoughts, good deeds. And the third is money. I'm going to take you into... 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. And I want to address something because there are many people who say that money didn't exist within biblical history. And so they say money is not a seed. That's not true because gold and silver were always used as currency throughout the Old and New Testament. And we can actually see when we read throughout scripture where it's talking about a weight of payment, and it may say a shekel or a talent. What it's really talking about is the weight of the gold or silver that's being traded with. And so it's just not biblically correct to share that information. 
And I'm going to take you to 2 Corinthians 9.10. I'm reading from my ESV. It says, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. That's the ESV. I'm going to read it as well from the Amplified Version, which I really like. It tells us, And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. And so, again, it's talking about how God will increase you. He'll increase your resources so that you can be generous, so that you can give more away, so that you can be more of a giver. And it starts with first having the heart of a giver. And those who have a heart of the giver, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter what they have in their bank account. It doesn't matter what they have in their house. They're going to find something to give away. They're going to find something to to create for somebody, whether it's their time that they're giving away. They have a heart of a servant and they're looking for things to do for other people. That is the reality of someone who has a heart of a giver. It's a heart posture. And because of that, they will always have seed in their hand. They'll always have more to give away. They'll always have more to give and do for other people because God sees that they are a sower. He says, I give seed to the sower. You have, a fir- you have to first be a sower before God gives you seed. And so this scripture here, when it talks about resources, it's literally referring to your money. So I want to let you know that every time, and this is for those of you who maybe the Lord has already spoken to you about it, you do have a heart of a giver. That is your heart posture. That's just who you are. I want you to know that every time you plant seed in good soil, every time you give, there will be a harvest. And that could be good deeds. That could be you praying for other people. That could be you pouring into other people words of wisdom, just speaking life over them. There will be a harvest. And no, it doesn't have to mean that you're looking for harvest. Because some people could say, well, I'm not looking for harvest. I'm not looking for God to give me anything. But that's just who God is. His word will perform in your life. And today we're actually talking about calling it a harvest. And I want to share with uh, you something about me and my prayer time with the Lord. Don't get to a point in my prayer time with the Lord where I am praying and I'm praising and I'm worshiping God. And I have an uh, order to my prayer time where I'll do Thanksgiving. I'll tell the Lord what I'm thankful for. um, And then I'll pray and then do Bible study. But as I'm telling the Lord what I'm thankful for, that's me literally praising him. That's me praising him for all that he's done in my life, all that he's done in this ministry, all that he's done in the lives of my loved ones, all that he's done in your life. And then I move into praying to the Lord. But by that time, you can get to a point in praising God and worshiping God where you don't even want to ask him anything, not because you're fearful of asking him and bringing your heart's desires before the Lord, but because you believe that it's already done, right? You believe that God is such a good God that the things that are on your heart, he knows, he knows what's on your heart because he put the desires there and it's already done. He's already dispatched angels on assignment to bring it to pass. He's already stretched out his hand into the situation to bring it to pass. And so when, when you get to that place in God, you're not really asking him for anything anyway, because you know that it's already done. And so When you're a person who has a heart posture like that, the Lord knows, I know, and you know that you're not looking for a harvest, but you know, because God is faithful and his word will never return back to him void. It will come to you. It will come to you. And so today we're going to be talking about, I'm going to talk to you about precisely how you can call in your harvest, because I believe that there is one for many of you. And so I need you to know, the Lord needs you to know. I'm going to take you to scripture as well, that every time you plant seed in good soil, there will be a harvest. Absolutely. I'm going to take you to Genesis 8, 22. And it tells us, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Now, I want you to really consider something. I want you to look outside and examine what season it is. For many of you, it may be winter. It it may literally be cold out. But you know, especially if you live in a state where there's four seasons or you know that it's not winter year long, you know that it's going to change. It's going to be hot one day 
as sure as the sun goes up and it goes down, as sure as it's day during the day and night at night, you know that the seasons change. But God also says, just as sure as those things change, just as sure as those things are in the earth and it'll never cease as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will never cease as long as the earth remains. It's the same. It's, it's actually a law. It's the same. And so if you plant seed, when you plant seed and good soil, you will reap a harvest. Absolutely. Just as the sun rises every morning, your harvest will come. It's the word of the Lord. It's not the word of Shannon. And so I want to talk to you about how your harvest comes, because many people may be thinking, you know, how could you call in your harvest? I know that's a question for many people, or how will it come back to you? Or what will that look like? Your harvest comes to you according to the type of seed that you sow, how you give, and I'm talking about how you give as in like the posture of your heart and the capacity at which you're able to receive it. I'm going to prove this to you. I'm going to take you back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. I want you to follow me here. I really hope you are following me here. I pray you are. Um, because this is something that's so powerful once you really grasp. It tells us, again, that 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 through 7. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart. So it's a heart posture. Not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. And many, you know, many pastors, many preachers, many people quote that last part of the scripture for God loves a cheerful giver. But what's very important is that we talk about the posture of, our, of the heart. <laughs> I keep butchering that statement. We talk about the posture of your heart because it takes the heart of a sower. It takes the heart of a giver to receive a harvest because there are many people who say, well, I've sowed and I haven't seen anything. Back. I've sowed and I haven't seen anything back. If you have the heart posture of a sower and a giver, truthfully, you're not really looking for it back anyway, because you just want to, everything you have is the Lord's. Every, you, if God came to you today and said, give it all to me in an instant, you do it. That's the person who has a heart posture of a sower and a giver because you give it away. You give it all away. But if you're someone who's constantly a little bit wavery and you're saying, God's not, my, I haven't received a harvest on my seed yet. Then number one, that's, that's equivalent to digging up your seed, really. And number two, you have to begin to shift yourself back into like realign your heart with that of a giver with someone who simply wants to pour into God's kingdom. And as you do that, you're focused on God and not you, not what you get, not what you get in return. You're focused on God and his kingdom. And as a result of that, God says, all these things will be added unto you. He said, seek you first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added unto you. You don't have to worry about any of, any of that. Just as he feeds the birds, you will be fed. You and you will have more than enough, but you have to shift your heart back towards God and the things of God. The moment you begin to start saying, I haven't received a harvest yet, or I'm waiting, I'm, you know, God's not, my seed didn't produce, or God's not doing this for me. It's about you. It's me, 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 and not God. Not the, not God's kingdom agenda. Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. You have to be the same. And so he's addressing the posture of the heart. He says, each one must give as, give as he decided in his heart. You have to make the decision within your heart. Not just because you heard someone say give, but it has to be a heart thing. Like you genuinely, you feel the tug on your heart. God dropped it in your spirit and you're doing it out of obedience, faithfulness, and you have a heart for God and the things of God. And that kind of giver will always receive a harvest and it will be mighty. It will be mighty. And so he addresses the heart posture. One must be in to sow and into the kingdom of God and receive a harvest. And um, I'm going to take you to Mark chapter 4. I know I wish is there, but I want to read something very powerful that I want you to grasp that many of you may have missed. So I'm going to take you to Mark chapter 4 and back to verse 20. 
It says, but those that were sown on good soil, this is again Jesus speaking, those that were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit. And listen to what he says after he says they bear fruit. He says some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some 100 fold. And so what I want you to grasp here is, well, number one, I know many of you may be asking, what does he mean by that? What does he mean by 30 fold, 60 fold, or 100 fold? It means that it's according to your ability to hold all that's coming back to you. So I've talked about this many times throughout this ministry where I'll say not everyone's able to hold 100% capacity at, at, you know, of all that's coming back to them. So you'll receive that the ability that you're able to actually hold it without crumbling under the pressure and the weight of it. So there are tons of things that God has prepared and planned for you. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. But what God does to make sure that you're able to walk in that fully and carry it all the assignment, because it is heavy, is he has to strengthen you and stretch you in capacity. This is why I talk about the stretching of capacity. This is why it's so important for many of you to receive sound doctrine and sound teaching, because that is what stretches you in capacity. It's hearing the word. It's sound doctrine. And so as you listen to this, this is actually what it's like to sit under the anointing of, of a teacher is you're literally allowing yourself to be stretched in capacity because there's so much word being poured into you that you're stretching. So when God puts the blessing in your life, right, because you're under an open heaven, when you receive a harvest, you're not just able to hold 30. No, you're able to receive 100%. You're able to carry the fullness of it. You're able to walk in the fullness of it. You have, to, you, know, you have to be one of those people that say, God, I want everything that you have for me, but then allow yourself to be equipped and stretched and matured so that you can hold all that he has for you. And so this is what he means when he says some 30 fold, some 60 fold and 100 fold. Because I'm going to tell you, when you sow seed and it's on good ground, you're going to receive a harvest. But how it comes back to you is dependent upon how well prepared you are. And so when you sow seed into this ministry, into other ministries, even when you pour into other people, you do good deeds for other people, you're going to receive a harvest back. You're going to receive people doing good things for you. You're going to receive money back. You're going to receive other people wanting to pour into you. But it's only going to happen at the level at which you're able to handle it. And so I want you to receive at the hundredfold. So you have to allow God to stretch you. You have to pour more word into yourself. You have to allow people to pour word into you. You have to sit before God in, in your secret time and in the quiet place and get in the word of God. Because just by reading it, you're stretching yourself. You're moving past milk onto meaty things. And as a result of that, you will be able to hold more and you'll be receiving at the hundredfold. And when God pours a blessing into your life, when the harvest comes back, Oh, it's going to be mega. It's absolutely going to be mega because you can hold mega. You have the capacity for mega. And so that is how it works. Some are only able to hold that 30% capacity. Some only 60% capacity and some 100. That's how it'll come back to you. And so Paul was addressing how you give the capacity and the capacity at which you're able to receive it. That's Mark chapter 4. So I want to share with you all what protects your seeds and your harvest. And then we're going to talk about calling in your harvest because this is, it's very crucial that you know how to call in your harvest because there is a devil out there and there are things out there that will try to prevent you from one, receiving at the capacity you're able to receive. We just read Mark chapter four, how it said the word is sown, but then the enemy comes to choke it out. He literally tries to stop you from receiving your harvest. We're going to talk about how you can call it forth. And then we're going to also talk about how you can protect your seeds and your harvest. This is so important. I'm going to take you to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 11. And it talks about the tithe. So the reason I want to share this with you is because many of you are sowing seed. You're wanting to call in your harvest. You're believing in God for a harvest, but you're not tithers. And that could be for whatever reason. That could be because of unbiblically correct doctrine that was taught to you. 
that could be because of maybe misunderstanding of the scriptures, just ignorance, whatever it could be. But I'm glad you're here today because the Lord wants to reveal something to you in his word. He's trying to get across something to you. And I know that if you're here, this is going to be major confirmation for you. Again, that's Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 11. And I just feel by the Spirit of God to tell you this. This is bigger than the tithe, meaning it's bigger than just giving money away. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. Pause. I'm going to pause there. This is God. This is God himself saying that he will rebuke the devourer for you. He will rebuke Satan, the devil, for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. This means that the fruit that, that you're supposed to receive back, your harvest from sowing good seeds, as you tithe, God himself will protect your harvest. God himself will do it. You don't have to rebuke Satan. You don't have to tell Satan to take his hands off of your harvest. You don't have to do that. God will do that. You just reinforce the word of God. You go, you go to Malachi chapter three, verse 10 through 11. You remind God what his word says that you are a tither and that he will protect your harvest, that he said he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You speak it out loud, out loud, out loud. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. I'm going to keep going. It says, and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. And so your tithe protects your seed and your harvest. There are many of you who are sowing seeds, but you're not tithers. And you're wondering why you're not receiving a harvest. That's why. That's why you have a devourer literally devouring up your harvest. God isn't protecting it. He's not going to move outside of his word. And so you have to come into the, what the word of God says about tithing. And as you do so, as you are obedient and faithful, then God says he himself. You don't have to pray and ask God for it. You just have to enforce the word of God. Speak it. And then you'll watch your harvest come forth. And it's just, how it, it just, it's just how it works. The word of God can never return back to you void. And so I'm going to talk about calling in your harvest, which simply means, and it's very simple. There are many people who overcomplicate it, but I'm going to tell you the word of God is not complicated. It's absolutely simple. To call in your harvest, it simply means to speak the word of God. And I'm going to prove it to you in the word of God. You speak the word of God over it. Just like what I was saying, you enforce the word of God so that it may come forth into your storehouse which is your accounts, your hands, because God says he'll bless the work of your hands. And so there will be resources. There will be money that will come forth into your hands and into your home. And so when I say that you speak the word of God and you enforce the word of God, you're not axing. You're absolutely not axing. You're claiming what is yours by your divine right, which is spoken over your life within the word of God. You're not axing. You're not begging. You're calling it in because it rightfully belongs to you. God is not a man that he shall lie. His word will never return back to him void. Jesus is still seated at the right hand of the Father. His word, is it exists in a realm of eternity. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was with God. And so as a result of that, and this is something that was spoken over your life long before you were born. You claim what's yours by your divine right. And so I'm going to read to you Isaiah 41, 15. It says, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. And so what it's implying here, what it's saying is that your teeth, your mouth is your threshing instrument. And what a threshing instrument is, for many of you who may or who may not know, is it is an instrument that farmers use to, or during harvesting time to separate the fruit from things that could harm the harvest. So that could be 
it could be straw, it could be seed, it could be really anything that is attached itself to the fruit or the harvest that they're trying to bring forth. They use a threshing instrument to separate it so that it can come forth rich. They can have a bountiful, rich harvest. And so what Isaiah 41, 15 is telling us is that your teeth, which is your mouth, it is your threshing instrument. So as you speak the word of God, you claim what is yours. You stand on scriptures around seed time and harvest time. I'm going to give you a few. It will call in your harvest and the enemy has to back back. So your mouth is the instrument instrument in what you use to harvest. You speak the word of God, it will literally, it'll call it in. It'll call in your harvest. And so I know there, I'm going to pray for you. But at first I want to speak to those of you who I know may be thinking that you don't have anything to sow. You may have read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, and thought to yourself, well, God gives seed to the sower, you know, or 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, and you're just thinking you don't have anything to sow. But I want to tell you to sow anyway, because I can guarantee you that if you set aside time, it's the same thing as if you were to make time for God. There are many people who say they don't have enough time to spend with God. You can't afford not to spend time with God. And so you have to make time to spend with God. And it goes back to the heart posture thing because it's those who have a heart to spend time with God. They will move everything around and their schedule to make sure that they are spending time with God. It's the same thing for sowers, for those who want to sow something. If you have the heart of a sower, if you have the heart of a giver, you're going to make time to pour into other people. You're going to find something to give away to someone to bless someone with. You're going to find a way to sow into the kingdom of God and do that more than you're sowing into the things of this world or than you're sowing into the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to pray that over you actually now. I'm going to get a sip of water first. (laughs) Okay. Lord, we all love you so much. Our hearts are turned towards you. We're looking towards you, Lord. We look towards you for everything. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. We are your disciples, which means that we follow after you, Lord. We're not just people who say that we believe in you, but we follow you, Lord. We look to you for everything, for our security, for, for, for our covering, Lord, for the way that we should go, for guidance for everything, Lord, not to the things of this world. I ask that you give your children who are here and listening today a spirit of obedience. Let it come on them now as the words leave my mouth, Lord God. Let it come over them and so that, so that they're quickened to be obedient to the word of the Lord, so that they become sowers, so that they become doers of the word of God, so that they become, as Mark chapter 4, verse 20 say, people who accept the word of God. And because they accept the word of God and they do the word of God, they bear good fruit. You say, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, but I'm believing with your children now that you stretch them in capacity so that they're able to receive at the 100 fold. Equip them with strength and endurance, Lord God, so that they're able to carry all that it is that you have for them. Stretch them, Lord, so that they can hold more. Help them to move forward to receive all of the promises that you have for them. Help them to seek you, Lord, as you say in your word that you reward those who diligently seek you. Equip them with with obedience, not only obedience, but help them to see that there is time in their schedule to set aside for you. Help them to turn their heart towards you, Lord, by showing them things that are within their heart, things that are within their life that are not of you, but yet they have taken your spot, Lord. Show them if there is anything that is on their heart that is sat within your spot, which you should be on their heart. You should be sitting on the throne of their heart. If there's any idolatry in their life, remove it now in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. Let the desire simply fall away from them. Let covetedness leave them now. Bring them into their right identity in you, Lord, as a kingdom ambassador for you, on the earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus, all that is coming for them. I want to call in their harvest now, Lord. There are things, there are good deeds that they have done for your kingdom. There is 
money, there is resources they have sown into your kingdom, Lord God, especially for those who are tithers, Lord. There is time and energy and words of wisdom and teaching, Lord, that they have poured into your people, loved ones who they want to see saved, Lord, loved ones who they want to see walking in the fullness of God for their life. They have spent time and energy and resources pouring into your people, into your kingdom. We know there's a harvest held up for them in heaven. We know there's a harvest for them. I speak to the enemy now and I say, you have no place in the harvest. I speak to the enemy now and I say, take your hands off of it. In the name of Jesus, I stand on Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 uh, through 11, where your word says that we bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there's meat in your house, Lord. And you say, test me in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I do not open up the windows of heaven for you. And I pour out a blessing where there's not room enough to receive it all. And then you say, Lord, that you rebuke the devourer for our sake so that our fruit will not be destroyed. We're standing on your word, Lord. Let them receive a mighty harvest in the name of Jesus, let it come forth swiftly, Lord God, as you are not a God who is slow and you don't exist in a realm that has space and time. And so we thank you that things are happening swiftly, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I know this message blessed many of you. I'm actually going to, well, before I forget, I'm going to say this. Um, I put out an email a few months ago where I talked about um, pretty much calling in your harvest. And here's what I'll do. If you get on the email list, I'll resend that out. Uh, if you go to shannonwellsministries.com and you uh, scroll to the bottom of that page and cl click subscribe, put in your name and email, then um, I will send that out to you. Also, if you go to the description below and download the roadmap there, that will also put you on the email list and I'll send you the free roadmap and you'll get some juicy things there. Um, but yes, I'll send that out to you within 24 to 48 hours just to give people time to get on the email list. Very powerful. There were so many testimonies and so many, so much responses that were just beautiful that came in when I sent that out the first time. And so I believe there are many of you that are new here and I want you to receive that. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to put seed and good ground. There's a link below for you to do that. And as Paul said, do what, what's on your heart. Don't give reluctantly, but give what the Lord has put in your heart. And I believe there's going to be a mighty harvest coming uh, for you as you are obedient and faithful. There are many other resources for you below. I want you all to know that I'm always praying for you. I love you all. And I'll talk with you in the next message.